What's going on, guys? Just Blaze 412 back with another preview video. And this week I got not only one, but a few special guests for this episode. I am joined by the Steel Twins and a Cleveland Browns fan by the name of Ungar to the Max. What is going on, guys? You guys want to go first or you want me to? Oh, you can go. You're, you're yeah, let's let Ungar go to the max because he's from the opposite side here. <laughs> um, just to clarify, it's actually pronounced Unger, not Ungar. Ah, uh, Unger. I, All right. No, no, don't don't worry about it. Everybody screws it up when they first see the name, so don't worry about it. You're, I'm not. I'm not upset with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, I am a Cleveland Browns YouTuber. Um, I run a channel called Unger to the Max, and within that, I have a show called The Sports Room, where you will find this video once um, it is uploaded. Um, at, on The Sports Room, I bring guests onto the show to talk games and, you know, talk everything Cleveland Browns or talk various sports topics, just general stuff. Um, I like to talk a lot about the UFC on my channel because that is one of my favorite sports. Um, I'm a big Columbus Blue Jackets fan, so I talk a fair amount about that. Um, I also do like the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Ah, oh. there we go. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I know. I know. That's dangerous because they're two they're they're rivals. I know, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Um although Jake Gensel is my favorite player on the Penguins. Not nothing against Crosby, but I like Gensel better. He's uh, on the rise too, so yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I still remember how well he played in the uh, uh, Stanley Cup final against Nashville. Mm -hmm. I think he should have won the Con Smythe that year over Sidney Crosby, but that's just my opinion. Um, anyway, I am a Cleveland Browns fan. Um, I am a season ticket holder, so normally I'm a little, I'm a little jealous of you on that aspect. <laughs> Normally, I would have would be going to every game this season. Of course, with the reducing capacity, that was not the case. So the only game I've been to so far this season was last week against Indianapolis. Um, which Good game to go to? Yeah, it was a great game. I think CBS made a mistake by not having Jim Nance and Tony Romo call that game. Instead, they had them call the 0-4 Cowboys. At the one and three, or I'm sorry, zero and four Giants at the one and three Cowboys. There right. we go. However, but, I do believe they will be commentating this game. Yes, I did hear that. Um, Thankfully, which, which makes me wonder why it's a one o'clock game and not like a four thirty game. Because if it's a one o'clock game, you're gonna have all the other one o'clock games, and I feel like not many people are gonna get to watch this game then. Whereas if it was in the 4.30 slot, you know, more of the country would be able to watch this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and definitely yeah, one o'clock game for Pittsburgh has been like the normal so far this year. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah. Say that again. I missed it. Yeah, the one o'clock games this year for the Steelers, it's been the norm. Yeah. It's, just, it's really bizarre. Yeah, same with us, except for the Thursday night game that we had in week two against Cincy. Yeah. So I guess let's start off by talking about your Cleveland Browns. Sure. What are, some of, what are some of the things you expect this team to do against this Pittsburgh Steelers? Okay, so I, have you guys watched a lot of our games or not really? I know the Twins are very uh, up to speed. M me, not as much, but um, I know that defense kind of scares me against this uh, Steelers offense. Okay, so – I, I said this to you guys before we started recording, but I know we just played the number one defense in the league statistically with, yeah. Indianap with Indianapolis, and they have a good defensive line with guys like um, DeForest Buckner Justin, and Justin Houston, and they have good players to like Darius Leonard, although he was injured for last week, but Bobby Okariki and then Xavier Rhodes. So they have good defensive pieces, and I understand why they're the number one defense. However, I feel like Pittsburgh's defense is going to be way more difficult because you guys have Cam Hayward. Uh, I almost said J.J. Watt. No, T.J. Watt. <laughs> Cam Hayward, T.J. Watt, 
Bud Dupree, who are all ferocious and can get up after the, excuse me, quarterback in their freaking sleep. Devin Bush is a good linebacker. I I liked that move when you guys traded up to take him 10th overall, I believe it was. Yep. Yeah. And then I, you guys have a solid back end with um, Minka Fitzpatrick, which I'm sure Miami is regretting that trade now. And, of course, you have Joe Hayden, who I'm very familiar with because where did he start his playing career? Let me think. Oh, yeah, that's right. Us. <laughs> that's right. Um, I'm but, very happy that we, we ended up getting Joe Hayden, just yeah. for the record. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited for this game, actually. This is the first Brown Steelers game that I've been excited for in a while. You know, that's funny. I just said the same thing to the Twins on their uh, NFL pickums. Yeah, this is yeah. the first time a Brown Steelers game is going to feel not only competitive, but exciting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you have to admit that week 13 game that we had in Pittsburgh last year did have something on the line because we were. I believe we were both fighting for playoff positioning at the time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like even though you guys are the second best run or second best defense, we have we might be able to run on you because um you guys faced Philadelphia last week with Miles Sanders, but Philadelphia doesn't really have another running back to you know, back Miles Sanders, if you will. Right. Whereas, whereas we have – normally we have Nick Chubb, but, of course, he got injured against Dallas. But we have Kareem Hunt, and then we have this kid, Dearness Johnson, who I believe he was undrafted in 2018. He was like – he was like fishing – a fishing guide or something – Lat and then in 28, I'm sorry, 2019, he was like in the Alliance Football League for, I think it was like the Orlando Apollos or something. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um, it's something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's exactly how it went, but I believe it. I believe I saw something that it was along those lines. And Baker Mayfield seems to have calmed down and. He seems to be getting a little bit of the swagger back from 2018. Maybe not as much as he had, which I'm fine with. Like, he's not quite as chippy. You know, if you go back to his college days, you know, he had the incident at Kansas, I believe it was, where, what, yeah, we don't, if you know, you know. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, he had the whole thing when Oklahoma beat Ohio State in Ohio State where, you know, he planted the Oklahoma flag in the middle of the block O at the 50-yard line. So, you know, but this season it's like, okay, Baker, you can have that swagger, but control it. And, you know, you don't need to throw the ball 50 to 60 times. Let our run game establish itself early, and then we can build our passing game off of that. So, what I've seen is it's like, okay, Baker, you only need to throw the ball like 30 to 35 times, somewhere in that range. And, you know, let Odell work. Let Jarvis work. You know, Rashard Higgins, a.k.a. Hollywood, yeah, that's his nickname, emerged for us last week. And I'm like, where has this guy been all season? <laughs> um, I will say this, too. The, um, yeah. Go if ahead. you guys, if you guys get the running game going, of course that will open up your passing game as well. Right. In and, regard to Beckham. Right, and it will slow down your pass rush. Absolutely. Yeah. Which, Which. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say, yeah, the pass rush is gonna be key here. I feel like if we shut down your rushing game and have Mayfield, like you said, throw it 30, 40, 60 times a game, that could be the difference factor. Sure. I'm, I'm not entirely impressed with Baker, but he has definitely matured. So I'll give him that. Yeah. yeah. Um, hold on. I'm just turning off my cell phone notifications. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. No, but you're good. For me, you know, I've watched Baker Mayfield ever since he came into the league, obviously. 
Um, he, he's been like, I've said this on past videos. So he's been like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where 2018, mm -hmm. he comes in for the injured Tyrod Taylor in week three. Kind of sucks that that's how he came into the league was because our starting quarterback got injured, but whatever. You know, he has a fantastic game against the Jets on Thursday night football. Plays fairly consistency the rest of the season in 2018. You know, had some bump ups and downs, bumps and bruises. But I feel like every rookie quarterback goes through that. Yeah. Even Big Ben did before he somehow broke out and led you guys to a Super Bowl in 2005. And, like, that was his second year, right? Yeah, it was the second season. <laughs> yeah, um, although I, I argue he didn't play as good as people think he did. In that Super Bowl or just in general? Uh, the Super Bowl specifically. Um, I, I would oh, not really? credit Ben with that one at all. But He was no. horrible. Yeah, his his rookie season, though, was pretty solid um, after right. the Tommy Maddox injury. Right. So Baker and Big Ben almost have, have that in common where they both came into the starting position of their respective teams be because the main guy got injured. Am I right? Or, yeah. So, yeah. So Baker plays fairly well for the 2018 season. And we're like, okay, Freddie Kitchens, you can be head coach. Even though he had only been like running backs coach or quarterbacks coach, one of the two. And then he becomes interim offensive coordinator after we fired Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley, which you guys are very familiar with. <laughs> Todd Haley, Haley, man. What a, what a guy he was. I'd rather take him back right now to be real with you. <laughs> <laughs> I had that feeling the other day, but I wasn't willing to admit that publicly. Yeah. Um, I believe we actually fired Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley the week after we got destroyed by you guys in Pittsburgh, if I remember yeah. correctly. Right. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, And so uh, Freddie Kitchens becomes offensive corn, or I'm sorry, head coach last season. And for some reason, Baker just took a step back. I don't know if it was I don't know if it was just simple as the sophomore slump. I don't know if it was he lost touch with Freddie Kitchens. I don't know if it's like did he did he like have too much swagger? Like was he feeling too much pressure? Because, you know, we bring in Odell Beckham Jr. We bring in Olivier Vernon. We bring in Sheldon Richardson. We make all these additions. We're put on four primetime games. And we should have gone three. Like, no, we did go two and two on those primetime games. But we should have gone three and one. If only we had actually run the ball. I guess <laughs> God, I sound like the Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a classic right there, man. Um, but yeah, and then this season, Stefanski comes in, which I guess Stefanski was actually in the running the season prior when Kitchens was hired as the head coach. It, I believe it came down to Stefanski or Kitchens, and the Browns chose to go with Freddie Kitchens. And well, like I said, that did not work out well. But Stefanski seems to have brought in some sort of calmness to Baker, I feel like. And like I just said earlier, he he's saying to Baker, dude, you don't have to throw it 40 to 50 to 60 times, whatever. You can throw it 30 to 35 times, and you can still get guys like OBJ involved. You can get Jarvis Landry involved. You can get... David and Joku when he's actually healthy and bald. You can get um Austin Hooper involved. You can get uh I forget his name. Hunter Bryan, I believe it is. Harrison yeah. Bryan, yeah. Harrison Bryan, thank you very much. Yep. Um involved. You can throw it to our running backs. Like, you know, stay calm and just be you. And it seems to have worked at least early this season. Definitely. You know, he he did the same thing uh, last year 
or a few years prior when he was with the Vikings when Cousins came in. Right. He the ball a lot with Cook, and that offense took off. So yeah, Especially last year. You saw how much Devin Cook broke out when he wasn't before. You know, Stefanski, I will admit, he's a hell of an offensive mind coach. And coming to Cleveland is doing wonders for you guys right now. Just look at your of offense. Course. Um, so I have actually have a question for you guys. So you, we saw what Tennessee did last year with their, once Ryan Tannehill came in as their quarterback and they ran their offense primarily through Derrick Henry, right? Yeah. Yes. So do you feel like this year's Cleveland Browns, at least to this, at least to this point in the season, do the, do the, does this version of the Browns remind you of last year's Titans? Honestly, a little bit. I will admit their rushing game is definitely the highlight of that offense. It definitely tones down Baker a bit, makes him more comfortable. Yeah, and I thought when they brought in Hunt, man, I knew that once he got cleared with his situation, which uh-huh. was going to be this year, um, I knew he was going to make some sort of impact with his team because of what he did in Kansas City. Yeah. which so That's a no-brainer. Yeah. I think if you guys get matched up with Kansas City in the playoffs, you guys could give them a tough, tough game. Maybe even be able to beat them. I think so. Like like you mentioned our defense. Now, granted, I've been very critical about them with their sure. inconsistency. Um, but if they can get more consistent, specifically in the pass de- uh, defense uh, area, yeah, I think we could give Patrick Mahomes a problem, especially if, if we're pressuring him throughout the game. Yeah, um, and I think the same could be said about this game with uh, Baker Mayfield. He and, does have four in- interceptions on the season so far, right? So, so I mean, clearly he's capable of making mistakes, especially yes. under pressure. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, but I feel like he's done a good job this season of like if he senses pressure in the pocket, he's done a good job of moving around, kind of like how Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, definitely quicker. But, Mm-hmm. Don't, but, but I'm not trying to compare Baker Mayfield to Big Ben by any means. So I don't want you to, if you're watching this, I'm not saying Baker Mayfield. We is, actually had a Browns. No, actually, it was a Steelers fan this morning that said Baker's playing better than Ben this year. Uh, <laughs> actually, do you think that is true? Do I think Baker is playing better than Big Ben? Yeah, in this in just this season, right. not overall. I'm focusing on this season. Um, I haven't got I've tried to watch a lot of Steelers games. You know, obviously they don't show them here in Cleveland. Um, actually I watched some of the Steelers game last week against the Eagles. Um <sighs> That's I don't know why. That's such a hard question to answer, though. I'll say this. Ben, right now, he's 10 touchdowns and only one interception. That right. alone, to me, is impressive because Ben's been an interception machine in previous years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's definitely- uh, so for him to only have one pick, now granted, we haven't played any incredible defenses yet. Right, um, which you're going to this week. Exactly. Especially so the- th- again, this again, this is going to be very interesting this week with this matchup. Not only is it a divisional thing, right? Um, but I don't know. I feel like this is going to be super competitive. Four mm-hmm. and one Cleveland against our four and zero Pittsburgh Steelers. So right, which you could be five and zero, you could be four and one. We don't know because Tennessee screwed up. Thank you for saying that, by the way, because there is a video on my channel that got absolutely destroyed by Tennessee Titans fans. I was so – you have no idea. Like, I have a Facebook page called The Sports Room, so go check that out. I'll definitely um, have the links down in the uh, description as well. Okay. So. Um, I also have a newsletter that I send out every Friday morning through MailChimp, kind of giving an overview of – what happened the week prior in the sports world. That's pretty much what the sports room is. It's It kind of started actually because a family friend reached out to me during this pandemic and was like, hey, I need some help. Like I go into meetings on Friday mornings and my colleagues are talking about sports and everything that happened. And I don't know what, I don't know what they're talking about. Can you help me out? I'm like, okay. So that's kind of how sports rooms started. And 
slowly but surely I'm actually trying to start it into like a fully functioning business. Like I'm slowly starting down that road. Like I'm trying to develop my own website. Um, oh yeah. I so see, I, I, I just saw Dan. He, he gave me a look there. I saw that. <laughs> I actually build websites specifically. I, I do a really good job at sports websites. So maybe after this we can talk. Okay. Um, that, that's definitely my thing. That's what I do outside of all this. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Um, I'm tr I'm trying to like or figure out how everything works on WordPress, and <laughs> I, I'm doing okay with it so far. But anyway, sorry for plugging my. No, video. you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, but I actually have a question for you guys. So, as Steelers fans. Do you view the Cleveland Browns as a rival? That that's actually been a question I've seen quite a bit this week. Because um, I, I mean, fans, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I I'm gonna say yes, just because of the history. And yeah, I mean, in previous years, it's been pretty overpowered with us. But yeah, uh, with you, I feel like you guys have a team, a young team at that on the rise, and I think it's going to you know revive this this rivalry. Okay. Twins, what do you think? Yeah, Twins, what about you? Do you I, feel like I, Brown Steelers is a rivalry? I actually agree. Uh, a lot of Steelers fans will say it's one-sided. How can it be a rivalry if the one team always wins? But I think this is definitely going to be a revival. This game specifically will be a revival of the 90s rivalry that the Steelers and Browns had, which was definitely full of respect and competition mm -hmm. and not the stuff that we saw in previous years. Uh -huh. and I, I think this very game will be – very different compared to previous years. This okay. is definitely gonna be one of those competitive matchups. The Browns are definitely going to bring it this this game. I think this will revive that old rivalry. So, Absolutely. Compared to other seasons, you guys are more competitive. You guys are growing. You're on the rise. And I have to agree. You know, going back to the old school days, even before the 90s, through the 70s and 80s, yeah. you know, I definitely think this is going to be a revived rivalry between the Steelers and the Browns. So it's interesting that I'm talking with Steelers fans and you guys say, yes, it is a rivalry because I'm a Browns fan. And I feel like a majority of Browns fans would say, yes, steel. We hate the Steelers, blah, 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 blah. So yes, they, it is a rivalry. But for me, it's not a rivalry because we haven't gone into Pittsburgh and beaten you guys since 2003. So it's like there's some sort of ghost or something. <laughs> <laughs> floating around Heinz Field that when the Browns come there, just haunt them. And I actually have a statistic right here. The Steelers lead the series against the Browns 76 to 59 to 1. Why is there a 1? Because of that weird yeah, that, that tie. Yeah. yeah I, I was <laughs> actually at that game when really? we oh, really? Yeah. Because I like, remember I was extremely upset about that. Yeah, um, but for me, it's like I want this to be a rivalry. Like, if we do video, when we do video collaborations in the future, I'm not gonna say if because I feel like we're gonna keep doing these. Yeah, I want these games to be like it's Brown Steelers. Like, let's get a little bit fiery, a little bit, you know, maybe not necessarily like get to the point of name calling because I want to. Respect everybody. That's just the way I roll. Yeah, of course. But like, I want the games to be competitive. I want the games to, you know, have the feeling of like what what Raven Steelers did in the early two thousands, and like, you know, you guys met the Ravens in the two thousand eight AFC Championship. I want like, man, that guys, was such a good time. Right, <laughs> such like, a good time. You guys met the Ravens in like week fifteen of two thousand eight with the AFC North possibly on the line, or you had the immaculate reception play with Antonio Brown on, like, Christmas or whatever. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Twins remember that one oh, vividly. Man. I went nuts. That's what I want. But that's the kind of thing I want for Brown Steelers. Like, when they meet, I want it to be like, oh, playoff positioning is on the line, or the AFC North division title is on the line, or, you know, like – something or like I just want it to be fun because it's like 
in the past, it's like, oh, Brown Steelers. Okay, Steelers are gonna win like forty-five to nothing. Yeah, right. I mean, you're not lying. You're you're very spot on with that. And, and yeah. so hopefully you know I, this week we can kind of see that revived. Yeah. Right. Like, truth be told, I want to see the AFC North be a competitive yeah. division. It's it's getting right. that way. The Bengals are gonna be on the rise soon. The Ravens are a top team. I think Stefanski is a definite upgrade compared to previous year's head coach that you guys had. Oh yeah, definitely. I agree. I seriously do agree. You know, we we are. We are vocal on the Browns fans, not you, because I will say, speaking to you right here right now, you are definitely one of the more respected Browns fans that we have personally talked to. I appreciate that. But I do agree, man. I want to get back to the days where it was respectful and there wasn't, like you said, <coughs> no name calling or anything. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely, I man. agree. Um, So, we're talking about this. Do you feel like – I'm sorry to bring this up, but do you <laughs> feel like the rivalry, rivalry got reignited – with everything that happened with Miles, I, I'm not. I do. <laughs> I'm not trying to support Miles Garrett for what he did to Mason Rudolph. Although I've heard every argument that like Mason Rudolph started and escalated it. I don't want to get into all that. Right. I don't want to start any type of argument and make us like mortal enemies. I don't want to do that. Right. But do you feel like? Th- and then you had everything with Freddie Kitchens wearing the Pittsburgh started it t-shirt and all that. Right. So do you feel like, so, you know, we're talking about is P- Cleveland Pittsburgh a rivalry? Is it not? You know, that whole thing. Do you feel like the rivalry was rekindled because of everything that took place last season? I, I personally do. I mean, this is, this is friendly. In my opinion, it, it's friendly competition, friendly banter. Yeah, exactly. Spot okay. on with that one. Gotcha. Um, now, granted, I don't know how the teams – we're we're just fans, so we don't know how these teams are taking these things. Right. But, um, but I did see it made headlines this week. Right. And I do think those type of things is going to make this a more interesting battle. Right. And, and, but the important thing is this time, it's not Mason Rudolph starting under center for you guys. It's Big Ben. So, you know – Mason Rudolph is where he should be on the sidelines. <laughs> what a day! <laughs> Agreed. 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 You guys remember that meme with with the uh, picture with with his head dented yeah, in? Yeah. 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 yeah, I think See, I can I, saw, I can I, laugh I, at that. I I, found, I, I thought I, that was funny. There was a Browns. I saw a video on like a Browns Facebook group or something where it was like a Mason Rudolph pinata, and Browns fans were like. <laughs> <laughs> Dick or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or That's a funny. Old game. It's, yeah. Or it's there was like a Christmas statue I saw, of, you know, of Miles Garrett and his arms just moving like this and going bam. Yeah. <laughs> you actually no. remember that one. That was good. Yeah. So, no, but I think that's an important aspect because Mason Rudolph isn't going to be on the field. But you, I'm sure there are players on your team. Who remember that incident from yeah from incident brawl whatever you want to call it insert word here from last season so I just wonder since Miles since this is the first time Miles Garrett is facing the Steelers since all the shenanigans do you think people like are do you think the Steelers are going to be on pins and needles like trying to get up on him and, like, trying, you know. I think well, – who was it this week that said they were going after Miles? I don't know. Uh, I, I could have sworn I read something on Twitter. Now, granted, it was on Twitter, so take that for whatever it is. But I did I did read something where one of our players said that they were going to go after Miles. Huh. I'm I, not sure if that's true. I did see Cream Hunt said something that this game is for Miles and everything. Yeah, I did see that. Well, that yeah. stuff we I think is confirmed, but right. right. If there's I, one player, or huh? I was gonna say if there's one player that might be going Pouncey. after Miles, it could be Pouncey. Yeah, for, for last year. But I think this they ought to put that past them. Uh, not necessarily sweep it under the rug, but more so water under the bridge. I hope they talk before game. Yeah, seriously. And is that why you're wearing a pouncy jersey, by the way? 
kind of, yes. Yeah, but no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, you. Oh, man. Hey. Come on. I thought you were going to be nice and wear like a big bed jersey or something. <laughs> well, at least they're not wearing the Browns are the Browns t-shirt that they uh, just put out on their, on their <laughs> shop. Okay. What? <laughs> Why do you have that? Show them, show them your Browns T-shirt that you guys put out. Oh, I'm scared. It's in my drawer there, the bottom drawer. Oh, I'm scared now. <laughs> no, no, not the other drawer, right beside it, Bob. Yeah. Oh, I'm scared. You know that shirt? After this weekend, that shirt might not make any sense. I think we lost the team. So I can't. There they are. Let's see. Can you see that? The Browns are the Browns. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, honestly, n- not much hatred to the Browns. I just think it's quite humor. To be yeah. Real. Um, we're, you know what's funny, though, is the reason we're called the, the Cleveland Browns is because, you know, of our founder, Paul Brown. Of right. course. But um, it's funny. Like, we have – the nickname of our stadium is called the Dog Pound. We have a whole section at our stadium called the Dog Pound. Um, we have an actual bull mastiff named SJ, which is short for Swagger Jr. Because we had a dog before named Swagger. He passed away. Yeah. Yeah, passed away, right? I'm surprised you actually knew about that. Yeah, yeah I remember seeing the headlines. Huh. I was um, sad because of that because – that was a beautiful dog. I ain't going to lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we have like a, you know, a traditional mascot named Chumps. That's a dog. And I'm like, why do we have all this dog stuff? I, I don't get it. And then we have a freaking alternative logo. That's a dog head. I'm like, we might as well change our name to the freaking Cleveland Bulldogs. Just say it. I'm surprised it hasn't been done yet. Yeah. But I actually have another question. So, why do you? Why do the Steelers only have the logo on one side of their helmet and not the other? I've always like that's always been one of the things that's fascinated me. Like, I want to know. I don't know the exact reasoning off the top of my head, but I do think it had something to do with. It, it was just one of those things where they only had one on the side years and years ago, of course. And they just ended up sticking with it. I don't think there was any like specific meaning. Maybe I could be wrong, but I forget the exact reason myself. But I think it was something along the lines of that. Yeah, yeah. Somebody I, in the comments down below can uh, inform us. I would or, or Google to, search. I would love to know because that's just such a classic look by the Steelers. And I've always loved that our team has uh, stuck with that classic yes. uh, look. Like we haven't changed uniforms too much. Yeah, um, I love your uniforms now. Although I am a fan of their uh, throwbacks. I, I actually wish they would make those our permanent jerseys. If you're talking about the Bumblebee jersey, no. Oh, hell, no. <laughs> no. sorry. But when you guys wear those Bumblebee jerseys, I'm like, oh, who's going to get stung? Well, some Steelers fans are not fans of those jerseys too. So, Oh, I'm not? Yeah. I, I think I'm in the minority that actually do like those jerseys. I don't want them brought back. But I I did like them for the short time they were there. Yeah, I think you're in the minority for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the numbers were just hitting. It wasn't even the bumblebee design. It was it was the numbers. The number yeah. like big white and the 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 old school block font. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. it almost <laughs> made you look like you were like in jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I never heard that one before. That's actually very accurate. Um, but I'm. A- I'm ex- the matchup I'm most like curious about is your wide receivers against our cornerbacks and safeties because Chase Claypool went absolutely berserk last week four touchdowns. Now I will get I'll dive into the matchup of your wide receivers against our cornerbacks in a second, but I want to just mention something. You guys do a great job of not drafting somehow you do, you're like nope we don't want to draft a wide receiver in the first round we're gonna wait till the second third fourth whatever and you find guys like a juju smith schuster and antonio brown well before antonio brown went completely off the deep end right yeah, yeah unfortunately 
And, you know, you found James Washington. You found a Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. And I'm just like, it's unbelievable. I, yeah, got I think Claypool could have easily been a first, too. Yeah. Definitely. You know, actually, the one surprise move that the Steelers did not make, which I was expecting them to, I thought you guys were going to be the team to draft Jalen Hurts. Really? Yeah. Oh, that yeah, was coming a lot. Personally, I did not want us drafting Jalen Hurts. I didn't think he fit in our system. And honestly, I do trust Rudolph to some extent as the number two. But yeah, that was that was being tossed around a lot. Right. Um, I'm not saying you guys made a mistake by not drafting Jalen Hurts, but going into the draft, I'm like, if any team's gonna take Jalen Hurts, for some reason, I just think it's gonna be Pittsburgh. I don't know what it. I I don't I can't tell you what my thinking was behind that because I'm not even 100 percent sure. But for some reason, that was just my thought of like, huh, Jalen Hurts to Pittsburgh to me makes sense. I don't know. I think I, I think it's just the uh, those in charge. They they really believe in who we have on the roster currently in regards to quarterback. Yeah, now, some but, of us don't agree with that, but yeah. Um, based off what I saw from Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph last season, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Mason, I, I still think Mason has an opportunity. Duck, I mean, no. Duck, yeah, I mean, he's on the practice squad for a reason. Yeah, Josh Dobbs yeah. is the third guy, so yeah. Oh, Josh Dobbs is your third guy, right? Yeah, he's back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't you guys originally draft him, anyways? Yeah, yeah, Over yeah that's what I thought. Time, boy. But I just wanted to touch on that, but. You know, with our defense, we play a 4-3 style defense led by Joe Woods, who came from San Francisco. I thought he originally came from Arizona, but my friend Jared pointed out to me that he came from San Francisco. So it makes sense because he was under uh, – Sala is his last name, correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. So, you know, playing the 4-3 I think has worked for us this season. But I'm just very interested. Are we going to put Denzel Ward on Claypool specifically because of what he did last week? Are we going to put him on Juju? And do we, if we put Denzel on Juju, does that mean we put Terrence Mitchell on Claypool? Because what we usually do is we put Denzel Ward on the opponent's best receiver. So, like when you guys had Antonio Brown in prior seasons, um, I think Denzel was only matched up with Antonio for one game or whatever. But you know, Denzel was on Antonio Brown. Yeah. When you play Cincinnati, you know, Denzel Ward's gonna go with AJ Green and so on and so forth. So are the Browns gonna overreact to what they saw from Chase Claypool and go? Okay, Denzel Ward, you go with Claypool and Terrence Mitchell. You go with um, Juju. I think that's I think that's a good point. I think maybe they do just because I mean four touchdowns. It should have been five, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it really should have been. Uh, mm -hmm. But four touchdowns in one game, I think that's going to warrant some changes with the uh, you know the defense coming into this. Sure. But then it's what about Juju? <laughs> you know what I mean. Or and of course, James guys, Washington. He's no sleeper. James Washington. Right. Yeah, James Washington's no sleeper. Yeah, I actually, James. I think I said this earlier. James Washington is my favorite player on the Steelers. Yeah, he's a great guy, man. That's Definitely. no disrespect to like Big Ben or any of your other guys. Um, I just like that underdog, underrated, under the radar, whatever type of phrasing you want to put there. I like that style of player, like. You know, James Washington, you know, he's not a star like a like a Big Ben, like a Juju Smith-Schuster, like a Joe Hayden. You could – like a Troy Polamalu. I could go on and on. But he's productive for you guys. He makes – I would – from what I've seen anyway, maybe it's not the same for you guys, but I feel like he makes key receptions at sometimes pivotal moments in games. 
And if you disagree, feel free. I don't mind. No, I, I don't know. Twins, what do you guys think about James Washington? I, I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. So, Am I giving a good assessment of him, or do you feel like – or do you guys see it a little bit differently? No, I definitely don't see it differently. He hasn't hit his full stride yet, but he's that one guy you go to to move the chains and get the first mm -hmm. down. Eventually, we're going to hit him on the deep ball at some point, so he's definitely mm -hmm. a viable point. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, he, he has very strong hands, too. He does. He's a hell of a talent, and I feel like we should definitely give him more snaps and more playing time. And that could be in this game, to your point, with Claypool on Ward, maybe, or Mitchell yeah. on Juju. Guys, you're going to have to step up. Yeah. Um, I actually follow James Washington on Twitter, or I think follow is the right word there. I, yeah. I, I get confused sometimes with Twitter. Um, <laughs> but – I sent him a tweet saying like, Hey, you're my favorite player on the Steelers. I would love to get your Jersey. And he, I think I actually, he actually liked my tweet. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's pretty cool. N nothing came of it. Like I, he didn't send me like a J like an autographed Jersey or anything, but still like a freaking NFL player. Like my tweet. <laughs> Come yeah, on. I have I have quite a history with getting reactions from uh, big time celebrity players. Yeah, who uh, twins? Who was the guy years ago? I'm trying to remember now. I know, I know. It was it was when uh, Burfitt hit Brown in that Bengals Steelers playoff game in the wild card. And oh, you I, uh, I hate watching that play. And then Deion Sanders actually defended Burfitt, saying it wasn't a dirty hit. Oh. So yeah. yeah, I got I got Sanders, Deion Sanders, to reply to me on Twitter. So that was pretty really, cool. yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, continue. Sorry. No, nah, I was going to say, uh, just plays. Didn't, didn't Antonio Brown reply to you one time? There's no way. No, not Antonio Brown. I don't think it was Brown. Are you sure? Because I just when you asked how his business, and he replied with booming or something. Oh yeah, damn dude, that was year. Really? That was like 2016. Oh, really? that's, when was, oh, that's when he was saying. Yeah. Wow. Man, wow. I forget. Of course, I had a different Twitter account. You guys know the story behind that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, James Washington. There, look at this. Tons of rookie cards of that man. Oh, um, that's awesome. I am. A, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm a low key big fan of uh, James Washington. I've been yeah. collecting all kind of stuff of his. But yeah, Deontay Johnson is a, another receiver I'm looking out for. He went to Toledo, mm -hmm. which that's pretty cool. That like, you know that you guys have a receiver like Deontay who came out of, you know, he didn't get – did you guys draft him or was he an undrafted free agent? I forget. We drafted him in the third round when he was originally supposed to be a day three guy, but uh, we okay. – what, what many fans said reached on him. Yeah. Okay. But, but you I, guys were definitely big on Deontay Johnson. Oh, yeah. More than the, I was before, he, you know, he started breaking out. Yeah. I like Deontay, but – the reason I like him is because, again, he's another one of those under-the-radar receivers that, like, every other team in the league passed up on him. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, it's, it might be the MAC, which it consists of schools like Akron, Kent State, Ohio, e I almost, Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan, Western Michigan, for crying out loud. I don't know why there are so many Michigan schools in the MAC. <laughs> but whatever. Um, Buffalo, what, a, and many others, Toledo, and you're, and the Steelers are like, but so you went to a small school, but you played well. Hey, you want to play for us? Yeah, Steelers actually have a history of getting guys from small schools. Harrison went to Kent State. Antonio Brown was from Central Michigan, I believe. So right, they um, definitely have a history of picking up guys from small schools and turning them into Pro Bowlers. Yeah, yeah. I would. Um, I actually went to a small school myself for college. Um, I just draft or I, I almost said I just drafted. No, I just <laughs> graduated actually this May, not in the traditional way. Cause you know, there's this thing. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called the coronavirus. Have you, yeah. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, so it took away my traditional college graduation, but I went to Notre Dame College in South Euclid, which is a suburb of Cleveland. And um, we've actually had a couple guys try to go to the NFL draft. I don't think any of them actually got drafted, but I think some of them 
temporarily made it to the NFL. I don't think any of them are still playing. I I would have to look into that, but right. Yeah, we're yeah, the- we're actually from we're uh, in the middle of Pennsylvania, and the city we're from, Shady McCoy came from. Really? Yeah. In fact, yeah. their 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 sit their older sisters actually went to school with him. Yeah, a few a few of our siblings uh, went to school with Shady. Um, and of course, that- Ron McCoy, which is Shady's brother, also played in the NFL. He was on the Cardinals. And I believe that head coach from the Cardinals was it Daryl Green or something? Yeah. I- yep. He he's from our city. Yeah. Wait, so we had quite a bit of NFL product come out of this this uh, small city that no one knows about, even though it is the state capital. Wait, are you talking about the same Daryl Green who in the post game <laughs> went, "We are who they thought they were." Yep, that yeah. is him. And yes. actually, one of the, one of the top draft prospects coming into this upcoming draft, Mika P- Parson, went to, or he actually was, he's from this city and went to. Uh-huh main high school in the city so yeah huh interesting yeah mm-hmm. nice so, toss that out there definitely. yeah that's just a little uh little whatever you want to call it but all right so we've pretty much talked about offense defense in, in, in a in a nutshell but i do want to point out something interesting here kareem hunt 347 yards three touchdowns compared to james connor's 268 now granted Steelers have been doing a, a, a something I was hoping they would do, which was sharing sharing carries between different backs. Yes, Wait. and you you brought up about the running game possibly being uh, one of the keys to the Browns in this game against this defense. Yes. Now Wait. I will say the Browns or not the Browns, but the Steelers defense has done pretty pretty good against run the running game. You're a, you're the, I believe I saw in like. NFL, the NFL's preview video on their YouTube channel that you guys are the second ranked defense behind the Colts. Mm-hmm. But as I've said countless times throughout this video, um, yes, we played the Colts defense last week. And yes, they're the number one defense statistically. And yes, they have good players. But I'm more concerned about your defense. What about our run defense? Does that worry you with Kareem Hunt? Do you think Hunt is going to be able to? It's going to be a challenge for Kareem Hunt, but don't forget about – I I don't want you to forget about Dearness Johnson either. Don't mm-hmm. forget about him because here's, here's what happened. Go back to the week four game in Dallas for a second, okay? Nick Chubb was still there. He gets injured, and did we go – did we go away from the run game after that? No. We still went right at the Cowboys – And we racked up, like, I believe it was, like, 307 yards, something like that. Mm -hmm. Granted, some of those rushing yards were probably because of the trick plays we did with OBJ, which once you pull out trick plays like that, I don't know if you can necessarily go back to those because, you know, like, I'm sure the Steelers probably watch some of the film from that Cowboys game, and yeah, so they can see, you know, when they're in their coverage, they could point that point that out. Yes, I meant to ask you guys earlier, what type of defense should we Browns fans expect to see from the Steelers? Like, do you guys play like a man defense primarily? Do you play zone, nickel, dime? What type of defense is it? I meant I'm gonna to let I'm gonna let the twins answer this one. I meant to ask I meant to ask you guys this earlier, but go ahead. It's really a mix of all that. We do some man, we do a lot of zone, which obviously has not done well for us in the past no. against top teams. <laughs> no. We do a lot of nickel and dime packages with Hilton. Most of that is nickel blitzes with Hilton. Which um, has been excellent this year. But yeah. Hilton and coverage is a different story. May I ask? What was Who- that? Who's Hilton? Mike, Mike Hilton. Hilton. He's the nickel guy, number 28. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah he's, he's somebody you guys are going to have to watch out for in this yeah. game for sure with uh, Baker. He's going to be trying to get Baker for sure. And if, if our defense coordinator blitzes like he always does, which I think we should toe down a little bit on this game, uh, that's definitely something to watch out for. Is those um, Hilton coming down. So, mm-hmm. so, so you, you mentioned that you guys play a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. So, oh, so I would – would you categorize – sorry, categorize it as like a hybrid then? 
Pretty much, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes we move Hilton to safety and put our strong safety Emmons at linebacker and put him in that hybrid role. So that's yeah. definitely a good description. Okay. So for this game, since Baker has the ability to move for to a certain extent anyway, he's not going to necessarily run for like 15 yards on a play, but, you know, he can gain maybe three or four yards on a play if the pocket breaks down. Do you think you guys are going to use, like, any type of spy in the middle of the field? See, I don't know because it would be ideal to do so, but at the same time, we also don't have a pure guy to cover the tight ends. No. So a spy does sound ideal, but at the same time, it doesn't. Like, as good as Bush is in coverage, he's a little – he's not there yet. Definitely suspect. Yeah. Definitely but the I pack, like Kevin Bush, though. Yeah, Bush is great. It's just his coverage isn't there yet. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't help. He's only 5'11", so his size yeah. is coming to effect a lot. Yeah. As soon as you guys traded up to the number 10 pick, I'm like, they want Devin. I knew exactly who you guys were taking yeah. at that point. I'm like, it's so obvious. Like – He's such a Pittsburgh guy, too. Yes, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and speaking of, like, your linebackers and stuff, another reason why I respect the Steelers so highly is because of how you guys handled the whole Ryan Chazier situation. Like, once he got injured and was paralyzed, you guys could have been like, okay, we're going to hang you out to dry and, you know, let you – and make you recover on your own. You didn't do that. Like, no. you kept him on the roster. I think you guys actually brought him to a game or something, mm-hmm. right, against the Patriots? Yes, oh, he yeah. was in the crowd. It was yeah, great. and, like, you know, he in, he announced um, a draft pick. I believe that was Edmonds. Yep. yep. Which Edmonds was that, Tremaine? Terrell. Terrell. Okay. I, I wish get, Tremaine. <laughs> I get two, <laughs> Don't I get, get them started on Edmonds. I get those two mixed up because – I think they're like twins or something. I think they actually got blocked by Edmonds on Twitter. Yes, yes Terrell. Yeah. Huh. We're, we're very critical of the man. <laughs> yeah, but you you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you you guys could have been jerks to Ryan Chazier and said, nope, you're on your own now. We're going to – you're injured. You're never going to come back. We're going to completely cut ties with you. But did you do that? No. You, you helped him out. I think you guys helped him out financially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Financial yeah. treatment, rehab, even still now, even though he's retired. Yeah. So I I really, really respect you guys. If I had to choose a second favorite team in the AFC North, it would be you guys. It really would. I, I've i always, like, looked up to the Steelers. I really have. Like, wow. you guys have done it the right way. You Think about it. You have Jerome Bettis in the Hall of Fame. Terry Bradshaw is in the Hall of Fame. Bill Cowher is is going into the Hall of Fame. Troy Polamalu. Heinz Ward should be in the Hall of Fame. It's a shame he's not. I think he will be. Heinz Ward is one of my favorite players. Um, Tro- Big Ben's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. I think Mike Tomlin's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Definitely. You know, I just... You guys have such a loyal fan base, and, you know, I watch, like, NFL, like, Ultimate Tailgate and stuff, and you just see, like, crowds and huge crowds of terrible towels and black and gold and, like, Steelers. Browns fans do this, too, of, like, you know, decorating school buses and turning into, like, <laughs> the, I don't know, the... The Steel Boss. I, I can't think right. of her name right now. All right. And, like, Browns fans will do the same thing, obviously. Like, that's not unique. But you get what, you get what I'm saying, though. Yeah, totally. Okay. I love your fan base. I love it. Like, I would love to come to a Steelers game that's not against the Browns just so I can – I'm not saying I would root for the Steelers necessarily. Although if they were playing the Patriots, I would because I absolutely hate the Patriots. <laughs> Their six Super Bowl trophies are not legit. Yours are. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, thanks. As a Steelers fan, yeah. Oh, man. Um, I but I want it. 
when yeah i i love the i don't want to say i love the steelers that's the wrong word yeah yeah i don't i don't know if you want to go that far no because i don't want to lose subscribers on my youtube channel. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully i gain some subscribers from your from hopefully some steelers fans are like hey this guy actually knows what he's talking about he might be a Browns fan, but I'll still subscribe to him anyway. Yeah, I think I think yeah, we'll say that right now. If anybody's watching this, definitely go over down to the channel. The link will be in the description, and definitely subscribe. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, and I primarily do Cleveland Browns videos. But I will talk about other teams, and I'll give each team for the most part a some time in the spotlight which completely different subject did you hear that Le'Veon bell is considering kansas city <laughs> Buffalo, and get this one the miami dolphins i was actually reading i he's trending right now at least on my twitter he is so i'm not sure if he finally picked the spot or what yeah, I'm, not sure that, but. I'm seeing a lot of buffalo bills talk and i put out a tweet this morning that i would like to see him team up with josh allen just the fact that, like, one of the teams he's considering is Miami is, for me, is that tells me money. For me, that's absolutely hilarious. In fact, I was just scrolling on Twitter. Now, this this has nothing to do with Bell. Uh huh. But, um, fifty five minutes ago, Kevin Stefanski says that Odell Beckham Jr. was sent home with an illness this morning. Ooh. Oh no. Yeah, he said with this day. And age, we just got to be so careful with this environment. He's oh, just feeling under the weather, so an abundance of caution. Yeah. So hopefully, it's not what we're all thinking, and this game is delayed. Yeah. Postponed, but you know, you know, with everything that happened last year, I'm actually surprised this is a one o'clock game. Me too. Uh, especially like you said, with Jim Nance and Tony Rumble commentating, mm -hmm. compared to previous years, this is definitely gonna be one of those Cleveland Browns Steelers games that you want to watch. Right. Although the Steelers or the Brown Steelers game in week 13 got flexed out of like the 430 slot because they wanted the Raiders and the Chiefs in there instead. I'm like, you you want to flex out Brown Steelers after everything that happened in week 11? Are, are you stupid, NFL? Right. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Are you stupid? Yeah. Another thing I want to point out, because I don't want to miss this, I do believe Derek Watt is coming back, which is going to change our plans in regards to the running game. Yeah, yes. he's your fullback, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can expect to see, you know, a little bit of the eye form. I'd like to see a lot more of it, but yeah, we Steelers have been running – they're running plays out of the gun, which I don't know. Hard. These draws are just silly. Definitely get some eye form if Watt's back, and – uh, use McFarlane more. I don't know if you know who Anthony McFarlane is, but I do. I'd say we definitely use him. He's definitely a burner that is just waiting to burst out into the scene. Yes, yeah, you know what else? I don't know why any Steelers fan was thinking the Steelers were going to target Le'Veon Bell. We are so stacked at running back. Yeah, you guys are good at running back with James Conner. I actually like Benny Snell a little bit more than James Conner because I think he's your – you're the more prototypical Steelers running back in the sense that he's that big physical receiver. Uh, I almost call him a receiver. No, running back. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Jerome Bettis. I know what you mean because he likes to get down and dirty and aggressive. I he, like he, it. He's not afraid. I would love to have a like a clone of Jerome Bettis. Just right. putting that out there. I'm not saying Benny Snell is going to be like Jerome Bettis and have like a Hall of Fame career. But I'm just saying his playing style reminds me of a Jerome Bettis. Agreed. Yeah, he's just a workhorse, man. That's how he was in Kentucky. I would like to see him more in right. the future. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that, though. Oh, yeah. Um, But for you, you know, we have all these receivers, right? Obel, I almost called him Obel. Odell <laughs> Beckham Jr., um, Jar Jarvis Landry, Richard Higgins, um, you know, we talked about the line, or I don't know why I'm tripping over my own words. I <laughs> spot. It happens very, uh, I get it happens a lot. I do it all the time. I right. start, don't with, tell you. Okay. Well, we have receivers like OBJ, Jarvis, Higgins. So, who, which, who would you like to see from the Steelers be matched up with 
each of those receivers? Do you think like Hayden's going to be matched up with Odell or do you think like the Steelers are going to put somebody else on Jarvis and put like, I want to know what you think the matchups are going to be. Well, I would say put Steven Nelson on Odell because what he did last year against Odell was good outside of that one play on Thursday night. Mm. And he did have two picks last week. Yeah. But in coverage wise this year, he has not looked good. So I don't know if that's ideal. Maybe uh-huh. move Hayden on Odell, but the issue with that is Hayden doesn't do, doesn't do good with speedy receivers. Yeah, so so I would say stick Nelson. That is if Odell's playing. If his illness is just like maybe you know a cold or something like that, hopefully everything's good. If you were to play, I'd say put Nelson on Odell and Hayden on Landry, just based on that speed uh, factor. I'd say yeah, definitely. And Hilton will probably be on Higgins. Okay, and what do you what do you think about like our tight ends? That is an issue. Um, that's been our issue for how long now? We don't know how to cover tight ends. I mean, we did great last week against Zach Ertz, but that yeah, was- but your face, but Philly only has like one receiver, or I'm sorry, not receiver, tight end. Right. Whereas we have like three. Yes, yeah. you do. Um, which I believe we have the same amount of uh, tight ends. Yeah, I know you have Ebron, but who you got as a free agent after he played? Decent. And Vance McDonald's. I almost forgot about <laughs> Vance McDonald. Thanks. Vance McDonald's. Old McDonald. <laughs> Twins do not other, like McDonald, by the way. Who's your other tight end? Oh, the, the guy you traded for from Seattle. No, actually, he, he got signed to the Broncos. Um, yeah, the third guy, Zach, is entry. He's nothing but a debt piece. He's I not- thought- I thought you guys traded for a tight end from Seattle last year, right? Yeah, yeah Nick Vanette, but we let him go this off, last offseason. Oh, I did not right. know that. So now Zach Gentry, who was one of the draftees we got from that Brown trade with the Raiders, he's he's nothing, if I'm going to be real with you. He's a non-factor. He's still a young talent, though, that's unproven. So yeah. you're so you guys are primarily going to use McDonald and uh, yeah. Ebron. Yes. Right. Do you guys use them in like two tight end sets, or is it primarily one of them is on the field at a time? Normally, it's one of them on a time. I want to see two tight end sets, but normally we split reps evenly with those two. Yeah, yeah, we if kind I- of do the same thing with Njoku, Hig, uh, Hooper, yeah. and Bryant. I'd right. like to see more two tight end sets, maybe a three tight end set. I'd like to see that. But you kind of, you were talking about how you guys play out of the eye formation if Derek Watt is healthy. I feel like we play out of the eye formation a lot where it's Baker under center, uh, Andy Janovich, I believe is our fullback's name. Right. And then we have like Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb. Uh, well, not Nick Chubb this game because, you know, he got injured. But Imagine normal- if you guys still had Nick Chubb for this game. Yeah. Man. If it's Baker. Yeah. I really uh, like Chubb a lot. Yeah, Chubb is uh, honestly probably my favorite Browns player. He's just a typical workhorse, you know, old school yeah. running back. You know, I'm a big fan of him. He's a hell of a hell of a player. Yeah. Um, so I and the one interesting thing that we do on offense is I've seen this a few times this season where we'll line up in the I formation and we'll make it look like it's just gonna be a standard run play and we'll do a play action. But instead of like throwing it to our running back, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, De- Dearness Johnson, whoever, or like one of our tight ends, Hooper, Bryant, or Njoku, or one of our receivers, we'll actually throw it to our fullback, Janovich, and he'll pick up, you know, five or six yards. So I haven't really seen the same, that same sort of style of offense from the Steelers. So maybe that's something your defense should watch out for definitely uh, especially if we blitz like like say you guys are in i form and we're expecting a run we blitz you guys got enough blockers to pick it up wide open hole in the middle yeah so that's yeah and that's I, been a problem this this season specifically with the steelers defense yes it has been so Steelers definitely need to be uh very careful of what they do yeah um but you mentioned blitzing i don't feel like the browns blitz a lot so that could be good for Big Ben, but that might not be good for Big Ben because if you don't blitz, it means your it means your defensive line 
potentially anyway, has more time to get to the quarterback. Now, obviously, it's not easy to, you know, sack or tackle Big Ben because he's fantastic at extending plays, moving up in the pocket, moving to left and right, and not always – he's – one thing I've noticed throughout his career, he doesn't re- necessarily – um, look to run for five or six yards or three or four yards. He's like, okay, I'm going to move around to give my receiver, whoever it is, you know, more time to get open and beat the defender. So I don't know if he's going to have as much of a luxury to do that given our defensive line. Well, Miles Garrett alone, definitely, against Villanueva. Yes. Uh, just last year alone, Villanueva doesn't have a good history. So even if you guys don't blitz, that pass rush is still going to be a, a big difference maker if they can actually get some pressure on Ben. Offensive line has been better since week one, but Miles Garrett alone. Yeah. Yeah, I think Miles Garrett's definitely going to make his impact in this game for sure. I mean, you no don't think they're going to double team him or not? Uh, potentially. Maybe we run a lot more shotgun just based on Connor or Snell blocking just to cover that left side for Villanueva. Right, but, you know, I don't always – I don't want the Steelers only focusing on Garrett because – Right, you, know, you can't do that. Garrett's great, but they still got Sheldon Richardson and Larry Obanjobi and Olivia. Vernon. Don't so, forget Olivia Vernon. Oh, yeah, man. So, you know, you, you can't, you know, always think of one guy because of how dominant he is. He always got He's always got six acts on the year. But don't right. really focus on one guy. You know, right. you need to focus on that whole defensive line. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're talking about like pass or pass rush and blitzing and all that. One of my biggest pet peeves in football is actually when teams go empty backfield. I just cringe at that because it's like <laughs> cause when when teams go empty backfield, it's like they're playing one of those restaurant open signs. <laughs> above the quarterback's head. Like, look, we have no running backs or wide receivers in our backfield to slow down pass rush. So free so free sack or free loss of downs, whatever. Right. So I'm whenever I see any team for that matter, even whether it's the Browns, Steelers, anybody, whenever I see teams go empty backfield, I'm just like this. Oh no. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. And that's something the Steelers like to do sometimes. They like to go all wide out, five receiver sets, empty backfield. That might be something that, although is something to take advantage of because of your guys' is weak secondary, it's also not ideal if you have no extra blockers exactly against that pass rush. So, so if you're going right. to be doing formations, you know, you got to strike quick. Right, because, you know, the benefit of having a running back in the backfield is if the pass rush breaks through your offensive line, you can have like, you know, James Conner or a Benny Snell or, you know, flipping it over to us, like a Nick Chubb, a, a Kareem Hunt, Dearness Johnson, chipping at the oncoming defenders, giving Big Ben or Baker more time to step up in the pocket or escape pressure. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, allowing the receivers to get open. Yeah. yeah. Almost like an insurance policy. Exactly. So, so we are just over. Wow. We actually hit an hour and 10 minutes. You believe that? Hour hey, and 10 we, minutes into this. Hey, um, when you're talking football. Yeah. And, and it's <laughs> two, hey, when it's two divisional opponents, you just get into it. What can I say? Yeah, I do want to we're going to be closing this one out shortly. But before we do that, I have a question for both sides of us. OK, um, and, and it's a pretty simple one. And I'm going to start with you, uh, the Max. <laughs> what What is the specific key to the Browns beating the Pittsburgh Steelers this week? First off, I love that nickname of just calling me the Max. The Max. I don't know. I, I just it just happened. I have no. a Steel Twins, man. I I kind of take credit for the name. I know your sister. <laughs> but secretly, secretly, I I kind of was in the in the lab cooking that name up. She's so the Max, know. man. I I just like that. The Max. No, I I I'll I might start using that. Um, 
Uh, but if I do, I will definitely give you credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's I just might, sketchy. Hey, I might start with my intro now being, hey, YouTube, it's Unger to the Max here, a.k.a. The Max. The Max. There you go. Something I always do for my intro is a salute to you. And that's because of the Columbus Blue Jackets and we fire that cannon. Yeah. And uh, our, the song that follows is, we salute you. And because I'm just a big hockey fan, you know, I kind of adapted that. So <laughs> I I did not steal anything from the Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> I kind of took what they had and made it my own. And the other thing I like to do, and I will answer your question. I'm not ignoring it. But no, the, other fun. Thing, the other thing I like to do is um, I like to do this. Punch that like button like a UFC fighter. And again, that's because I'm a huge UFC fan. Yeah. The reason I actually became a big UFC fan is because um, Stipe Miocic won the UFC heavyweight belt at UFC 198. And he's from here in Cleveland. So oh, wow. I, I just became a huge UFC fan ever since. But to answer your question about what's the biggest key – uh, for the Browns against the Steelers, I would say a st sticking to our – wow, did it again. Sticking to our identity of, like, I know the Steelers have a, the second-ranked defense. You guys are fantastic against the run. I mean, aside from the one big run by Miles Sanders last yeah. week, you guys did a pretty good job of uh, – you know, not allowing Philly to run the ball. But then again, I wouldn't say the Eagles are really a rushing team. No. But, yeah, for us, it's stick to our identity, you know, keep doing what we've been doing of running the ball early and then build our p passing game off of that. I mean, we I understand why we came out passing so much against Indianapolis last week. I don't know if that's the right way to go about it in Pittsburgh. I just – not against the defensive line that features T.J. Watt, Bud Dupree, and Cam Hayward. I'm sure I'm missing others on your defensive line, but those three are the – for me, are most notable. And I think for us, the keys to winning this game is going to be obviously pressuring Baker Mayfield – establishing uh, the run so that our offense can do good with Ben Roethlisberger and the passing or the receivers. And stopping um, even running game because if you force Mayfield, like the Max has said, yeah, forcing him to throw it 30, 40 times a game, right. I don't think Mayfield is capable of that yet. Right. Right. For, you know, his QBR seems to go down every quarter. Ooh, that's I, good to note. I think I read that somewhere. I think his QBR in the fourth quarter drops off to like a 7.4 or something like that. And the fourth quarter is usually when our team starts to pick it up more. Absolutely. Yeah. So that concerns Especially this season. Me. That concerns me. But what doesn't concern me is the fact that you guys are going to have fans. Because, you know, I was at the game last week and we had 12,000 fans. Although it did not look like there was 12,000 fans in the stands. Yeah, it was pretty spread out. Yeah, but so we, sh we should not be intimidated by, you know, playing in front of fans because we're playing in front of fans ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I've said this on previous collaborations and videos that I've done. Um, I know that, like, virus numbers are different across the country. I totally understand that. Um, I just wish the league could create some sort of policy for every team. Cause I just, I just don't think it's fair that like both the Browns and Steelers can have fans, for example, but like Seattle cannot or that. No, I totally agree with that. Right. Like, or that Indianapolis can, I believe the Colts can have fans, but Minnesota is not allowed to like, yeah. I'd like to see some sort of policy. Yeah, because and some people probably won't admit this, but fans do have an effect in a game. Yeah, Especially when it comes to play calling, you, you know, the, the players communicating with each other, those kind of things. Or yeah. just so, uh, us fans, we do play a major effect. 
I was yeah. actually going to ask you guys about that. Because, like, you know, I whenever I go to a game, I always think about, like, the atmospherics and all that. Like, for example, when I go to a Cavs game and the opponent that is at the free throw line, this is actually pretty coincidental, they put up, like, a picture of Big Ben or they put up the Steelers logo and the whole arena just starts booing. <laughs> you know, Cleveland hates the Steelers. That's funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm now we've established I'm not one of those fans that hates the Steelers. Um I if they're playing New England, yes, I will root for you. Maybe there are other teams where I'm like, okay, I'll root for Pittsburgh. But if they're playing the Browns, sorry, I'm not. I <laughs> it's understandable. No. As you can see, I am a Browns fan through and through. Um, but I do, I do have a Steelers flag, right? You can see it. Um, I actually have a pennant for every NFL team. Wow. Oh, there we go. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. You're not even seeing everything that's on my recording studio wall. That's pretty um, cool though. I, I do like the, uh, the ones behind you though. What? It looks, I don't know what those are. There's some sort of posters with players on each um, one. So what those are is um, those are the roster sheets. They have the – hold on. I can show you one. So this is the one I got from the Seahawks game last year. That's so cool. On the back side, um, like you can see, oh, wow. there's, this, there's the Seahawks roster. And on the other side is the Browns roster. Wow. And I'm assuming you get those from a game, right? At, like from each game, yes. Wow. Uh, I wonder if the, I wonder if the Steelers do that. For yeah. me, like I decided to collect those because, you know, I think the Steelers did this too of no longer giving out physical tickets, which really bothers me because, um, over in my bookcase I have books and books of like tickets of past games that I've been to and all that. I love collecting tickets. So for me, like those posters don't have my specific seat and what section I'm in, but I'm like that those posters prove that I was at the game. So, right. So they're like my, they're, they are my ticket without having the actual, you know, seat information and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, I actually do have physical tickets from when I went to the Browns Steelers game back in like 2015. And I have a whole YouTube playlist of it too. I can uh, send you guys the link for that if you want me to. Yeah. Why not? As soon as we get off here, but okay. I just noticed, yeah, that said, we are going to have to cut this a little short. I didn't realize how long we were gone. I'm sorry. I just went off on that little. No, you're, you're absolutely good. Man. Wait, before we go, do we want to do score predictions? I I personally don't do them, but I know the Twins wouldn't mind doing a score prediction. All right. Well, I'm going to go with the Steelers. Um, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, um, I just think that that point that you made where they haven't won, the Browns haven't won in Heinz Field since 2003, that could come into effect again. Although this will be close. I'm going Pittsburgh 29-23. Yeah. I'm going a, I'm to a go with my team, the Steelers. Obviously, you know, everything aside. You know, Steelers are a good team. The Browns are very competitive. They're looking very good. I do think this will be close. And I got the Steelers pulling out a win barely, just like they did a couple games earlier this year. I think they will pull out a victory by a field goal, 29-26. to 26. Okay. So, for me, I'm an objective Browns fan. I'm not just automatically going to pick them. Like, I actually picked the Colts to win last week because, you know, up to that point, we hadn't really played anybody aside from, you know, getting stomped by the Ravens. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even sure we got off the plane in Baltimore for that game. <laughs> I, yeah. But, you know, on this four-game winning streak, we've played Cincinnati, who I'm sorry, but they're the doormat of the AFC North, at least for this season. Right. Washington. And Dallas, which they're in the worst division in all of football. I think the NFC East only has like four wins combined. Yeah, they're absolutely horrible. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, our next NFC East game is Philadelphia in week 11. And then we play the Giants in week 15. And then, you know, we beat the Colts. So I'm going to pick the Browns for this game, not because of anything against the Steelers, but just because I like the style of how we're playing. Not necessarily because of who we've played, because, you know, the only legit team we've beaten is Indianapolis, and that was because Phillip Rivers played like Phillip Rivers. Yeah. So I'm going to pick the Browns. I'll say low-scoring game, actually. Very defensive AFC North-style game. I'll go 21-17. Okay. Wow, wow, not bad. I mean, it's not completely out of the realm. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying it's not completely unrealistic to think the Browns could pull one out here. I know we have the number, you know, but – this team is improving, and the Steelers, again, I want to stress this, the, I, I personally think our defense has been playing a little inconsistent. And you guys haven't really played anybody either. Like, you start no. the season at, on the road at the Giants on Monday night, then you come home to play the Broncos, which um, I actually wanted to go to that game. I thought, for some reason, I'm like, ooh, the Broncos could be a – a decent team this season. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I want to go see Broncos at Steelers. Actually, last season, I wanted to go to your game against the Rams, but whatever. Um, then you played Houston, which, you know, Bill O'Brien was the coach at that time. Do I need to say more? No. no. And then you played Philly, which, again, the Eagles are part of the worst division in football. So I – you guys haven't really played anybody either too much. So we're kind of in the same boat. Totally. So do you feel like, I feel like this is a measuring stick game for the Browns, but I would also say it's a little bit of a measuring stick game for the Steelers. Absolutely. I agree, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. This is definitely the toughest matchup for both teams. Yeah, up it's it's, it's going to be a true test and it's going to yeah. be really fun to watch. See how both teams can do against each other. That's why I'm saying, Low scoring AFC North style defensive battle 21 yeah. 17. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, that said, man, I want to thank all of you guys for joining me today in my game day preview. Um, the Max specifically, because I didn't think I was going to do any collaborations this year. Um, but before we go, I want to let the Max, I like that name by the way. I do, too. <laughs> I want to let the Max sign us off. Um, I have my own sign off for my YouTube channel. So I'll, if you guys have your own sign offs, I'll let you do that. I don't want to don't, but the twins do. They have their very famous piece. Yeah. So <laughs> do you guys want to go first or do you want, do you want me to go first? It doesn't matter to me. Well, I'll, I'll let you go first. Okay. All right. Um, well, in that case, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of the sports room, even though I was not the host, uh, just plays. I very much appreciate have you having me on and steel twins. Thanks for pointing me out or pointing me in this direction. Cause I originally reached out to them about doing a video collaboration. And then this whole thing came together. So very much appreciate that. Um, and again, I want to extend an invitation to both of you guys to come on to my show to preview week 17. When you guys come up the turnpike to First Energy Stadium to take on my Cleveland Browns, hopefully on a Sunday night game. I'm 100% down for that. Um, so here. are are we? Can we set that in stone that we're that we're doing that then? Yes, absolutely. yes, absolutely. All right, all right, sounds good. Um, but until next time, I'm Unger to the Max signing off. Wait, I'm Unger to the Max, aka the Max. <laughs> Credit to Just Blaze. There we go. Signing off with a salute to you. And if you liked what you saw, give that subscribe button a big punch to the face like a UFC fire and punch that like button. See ya. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace. I love that.